Okay, then, Lydia. How are you doing? How you doing, Lydia? Good, how about you? I'm doing okay. Um, I'm a little behind on emails and things, and um, I didn't respond about your survey, but I guess we can talk about it. Um, one point of clarification, was that to send out to businesses? It was oh, to individuals? No, it's specifically for the uh, Marianne's Cafe. Oh, for Marianne's Cafe. Okay, gotcha. Oh, look at all these people. Okay. Uh, all right, it looks like we have a quorum and we're almost at 11. Good. I know that, um, well, I'll wait till we start. <laughs> Carol, video. <laughs> Am I there yet? You're there, but we don't see you. Hmm. Can you see me now? Now we can see you and hear okay. you. Good. By the way, Olivia is still not on the email list. She hmm. is. She well, she hadn't got I sent her the things yesterday, but she hadn't received notices of the meeting. I think I included her in the agenda when I sent it out. Oh, okay. Yeah. But um let's see. Did so it's 11 o'clock and well Fleet Recycling Committee meeting. Is um, Olivia able to join us? Oh yes, she's, she's, I saw her on Sunday evening, but she's coming, but, but she- uh, Does she, she have the I mean, do you- yes, because, yes, because I sent her the notice for the, okay, for the okay. meeting. Um, we'll but, wait, uh, she, she was she on was the only list getting it through me. She received Maybe. it because I included, okay. I changed it in the context. So. Oh, good. Fine. Hi, Olivia. <laughs> <laughs> A glamour shot. <laughs> hey there. Hi, welcome. Olivia is our newest member of the Wellfleet Recycling Committee, so we're really great. So happy to have you on board. Happy to be here. I didn't get, I got the reminder for today's meeting, but I didn't get the original notification. So. Okay, maybe, um, well, now you're on the in the context, so you'll be getting them from from now on. <laughs> Good. So everyone, um, do you have any announcements to make? Any? Uh, no, look like that. I don't think so. All right. So well, I'll just announce that uh, Mike Sakali is not able to join us today. He's the transfer station foreman, and I think he's on vacation. He's away until the seventeenth. And Carrie Parcell, also the, um, she's from the Barnstable County and our waste reduction coordinator. She's not able to join us um, either. So we'll go, um, the transfer station recycling. Something's up with the, uh, some audio. I don't know if it's, I think it's better now. So um, transfer station recycling center, there's, Mike showed me that they put a kind of pointer, an air, a hand with pointing away to the composting. So that's really nice. And there, he said that they've been super busy, but they're um, ready to, you know, do more for encouraging people to compost. And so the sign helps kind of directing people where to go for the residential drop-off program. And is that anything else? for the transfer station. I think the- Have we start um, Wednesday and Thursday closing? Yeah. That started actually started this tomorrow. Week. That's right, that's yeah. a really good point. They're gonna be closed tomorrow and uh, Thursday. So that's starting, yeah, starting right now. Lenny just told me that uh, corks and bottle tops is done for the season as of this week. Oh, it's too bad, okay. He oh. had a little bucket that he was putting the corks in and the bottle tops. And I think the corks, oh, look, there's Jaya. Let me get her in here. Jaya. She's, there she is. So, 
So, um, Joe, we can't hear you or see you yet. But maybe momentarily. So thanks for that update, Olivia. That's, that's helpful. And uh, there is a place in P-Town that accepts corks year round. Is it Penny's Liquor Store, that place? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's, um, okay. Did you say Penny's Liquor Store? Yeah, it's right by the Stop and Shop. Okay. Oh, okay, that one. Be nice if we could have a town location to collect them and then I'd be happy to drive them up there once a month or so if if really? we could get the dump to keep collecting them. Do you want to ask Mike about that or next or um I haven't met Mike yet, but yeah, yeah. Well he's on vacation now, but um I'm sure you could, could send an email or something so when he gets back. Or it could go to uh Maybe it's partly because Lenny, I don't know, is it because Lenny's not working beyond Labor, yeah. Labor Day? Okay. There might be a way to collect them in the um, swap shop. He said that someone in the swap shop is enthusiastic about it. Yeah, I think that's a former recycling committee member, Beth Bramer. She used to do it. Yeah, there is a bucket of, of corks in the swap shop. Yeah, so why don't we just take them there? Because that's up in your ass. And then, yeah, if, if you or Beth, or you could um, reach out to Beth uh, and share that. Yes, that would be great. And maybe um, we can put that on, um, add that somewhere to a either little sign or, media or, or yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, even a sign in the swap shop too. Yeah, mm -hmm. we collect corks and then maybe say what happens to them just because I'm sure people are curious. I think they get chopped up and made into cork board and other things, cork flooring. I thought they were sold on, the P-Town at least, they're sold on Etsy for crafting. Okay. Right, that's what I'd seen. Yeah. That is reuse. So mm -hmm. yeah. I think uh, the recycling might be good too, because I think for cork boards, they're not using the corks that you would, you know, kind of right from the tree. I think they, they are chopping it up. Hmm. Um, and for the bottle caps and stuff like that, I think that just, it might go in the metal pile. However, I think a lot of, some of the, I don't think they sort it. I think maybe that just gets trashed. Yeah, Mike told me that you can put them in there, but you need to like put them in a tin can with, you know, the top squeeze shut so they don't just get all over the place. Right, so um, metal, that's a, yeah, that's metal tip that we, yeah, that's a tip that we could also add to whatever wherever we want to start doing tips, maybe on our website. Sure. Yeah, maybe or something just on, on, on those kind of things, those very like metal, metal caps and corks and mm -hmm. what people can do with those. That could be a, a, a little item that could go out through the chamber or through uh, social media, et cetera. So energy and climate action. Oh, okay. I have a question, excuse me. I just kind of ran in from another. Um, where are the caps now going? Lenny was collecting them in a bucket um, next to the uh, glass recycling. Thank you, yeah. It was yeah. just a convenience for people to have a place to put them rather mm -hmm. than put them in the trailer or the dump. Thank you. Uh, does anybody so, have There is a phone and a uh, computer speaker, uh, microphone. There's a lot of extra noise, isn't there? Yeah. yeah, I'm gonna check. You can take turns muting and see uh, where it's yeah. coming from. Can you try muting, Jane, and see if... Um, Let's see if it's still coming. Is it, someone else want to talk? Is it better now? It is, it so it's, it's either Jaya or Jane. Do uh, either of you Daya, can you turn on your microphone again? Do we still have the, uh, yeah, it's yeah, okay. So no. I think it's you, Jane, do you have? There's, there's nothing on here. You, you have don't have phone? your uh, cell phone or anything? I have my cell phone off. I turned it off before I always do that. Seems better now. Doesn't I'm wondering good? if it's something, if it's when one of us is talking, there's an echo somewhere, somehow. Mm. We don't, we don't get that when nobody's saying anything, right? Yeah, it's definitely uh, voice related. 
Okay. It's okay. We can live with it. Okay. We can better now. I can't hear you now, Christine. We can meet mute when we're not talking. <laughs> okay. I'll try that. <laughs> All right, sounds good. Um, so corks and bottle cups. Then we have Energy and Climate Action Committee liaison, Carol. Unmute yourself and give us an update. We're meeting tonight and nothing particularly significant as knowledge, so. Mm -hmm. Sorry. I think there's additional polls that went up for the um, solar, is that right? It almost looks like it there. Yes, I think they're ready, except Eversource has to do something and it's on their schedule, but we don't know how many weeks it's going to take. Okay. So, and mm -hmm. and there is a there will be a press release about a grant um, that we got for town buildings. Oh, good! Congratulations. But I don't remember the details, but that'll be coming out shortly. Uh huh. Good. Uh, the next thing is Mass DEP, Kitcott Commission, Barnstable County Extension, the Boren Landfill Expansion Proposal, recent hearings. Um, since Carrie's not here and Mike either, I, I did participate in one of the Boren Landfill hearings, the first one. And at that point, it was being the hearing was held by a subcommittee of the Cape Cod Commission. And uh, they decided at that meeting to postpone their decision awaiting more information on uh, certain subjects like remediation. If they do allow the landfill, they said, well, will there be, as a condition, could there be solar panels there and also uh, an open space area for pollinators? So those were two of the things that were conditional. And the Cape Cod Commission itself will be voting on it um, as a group, so this was just a subcommittee. Uh, I brought up the, you know, the thought that they should have a, a plan for food waste composting, an anaerobic digester, some kind of a, a program there for that. And uh, so hopefully they will also include that in their, in their plans, but it's unclear if they will. The second hearing, I understand that subcommittee voted four to one to have the Cape Cod Commission, the full committee, uh, consider the request. So that's where that stands. Um, um, Lydia, was there any discussion about PFAS contamination? Or there was. They're they're conducting a pilot program right now um, to test it. And I think um, if you want to learn more about that, I think Chris Powicki of the CR Club Cape Cod would be a good person to talk with. And there's probably someone on the commission as well. And uh, you know, also there's ways to to reach the commission by you know by email or mail. So we could um, we could ask them about that. I think uh, so. That's where that is. Uh, then number number four, we have uh, Well Fleet plastic water bottle ban, the single use commercial. Plastic water bottle ban is in effect as of September 1st, and it's and it shows there's places that have removed all of their single-use plastic water bottles uh, under gallon. So at Stop and Shop in Provincetown, for instance, and I went to um, a couple of stores in Wellfleet that looked like they, you know, they've removed them from the shelves. So. Yes. Lydia, do you want to mention the communication from? Um from the uh, sandwich shop and the Sure, discussion. she had, um, the box lunch had some extra stock and, and uh, the notification letter was sent out in May to all licensed businesses in Wellfleet, but I guess some, you know, maybe didn't have a chance to read it or carefully or um, didn't receive it. So they, she had extra stock. And um, I think that we sent a, just a note saying what you can do with extra stock is either try and return it or exchange it with the supplier. Um, you can share it with your staff and just consume it. You can give it away, um, but uh, there's, you know, you can't sell it. That's, that would be against the rules as of September 1st. 
And also the thought of donating it to what um, the, some folks at the transfer station suggested was maybe donating it to a local shelter or kitchen. So just to use up that water. And uh, then the, we sent out that um, flyer, which you saw through, uh, we sent it through the chamber. It's also on the town website, which talks about you know, the alternatives that people can, can offer like water dispensers, or water and glass bottles or aluminum cans or screw top bottles. So that's where that is. And it's, uh, the, the enforcement part of it is the, um, it's up to the town administrator to either enforce it him or herself or to appoint someone to do that. So um, right now they, the first penalty or whatever is a written warning and then you know, maybe the next time they do a, an inspection, there would be a fine. But I think they're, you know, especially since it's so early on, I think they're going to be watching, but also, you know, a written warning is what one would get initially. I just wanted to mention that the chamber, um, uh, we sent it to them on Wednesday, which was the same day their September newsletter came out. So the flyer missed that but we did ask them to uh, do an email blast, which would normally be a charge of $35. But since it was a public service and not something to benefit the recycling committee, they waived that fee. But that was after I'd already paid it online. <laughs> so we just have a credit of $35 for next time we want to sell uh, an email blast. Um, Try and remember that for our minutes and for our account. Yes, yeah. So plus 35. Um, Yes, I'll print out the, uh, well, I printed out the invoice and I'll uh, make sure that uh, uh, correct uh, the next time. Yeah, so maybe you want to think about something to send out next month or in the next, you know, few months using that credit. Um, next up, uh, is there anything else you want to say about the um, bottle, Anne? Y yeah, um, I just wanted to say that, um, so far, the town has put uh, the really nice flyer that Lydia did um, on their website in the news, but we haven't posted it either social media or updated our website. Um, there are other suggestions that I heard from people on our Refill Cape Cod working group to like um, do a little PSA on it for the um, for the. Um, local TV station. Is it channel 11 in Wellfleet? I forget. Anyway, or to do a, you know, they do like a little news thing on the bottom of the screen when things are going on that you can send something to them to, um, to say something uh, related to that, to the uh, ban or the information in the flyer. Mm -hmm. And um, then of course we can also do social media. So the chamber said they would do something with it on social media and they would also include it in their October newsletter. Mm -hmm. Great. That's good. They're gonna put it in the October newsletter. I think mm -hmm. a lot of people see that. And other towns, I mean, um, I spoke with Sherry Prado Provincetown to see if they had had any questions about um, overstock or remaining stock and she hadn't at the time but maybe we'll check in with her again to see how things are going for next month. Uh, number five is October 3, the Wellfleet Ocean Week. This is a new a new thing which is uh, run by the Recreation Department and Becky Rosenberg emailed us. She's looking for water station volunteers again and that would be October 3rd at 9 a.m. And that's October 3rd is a Sunday. So if you're interested in volunteering for that. I can do it. Olivia? Yeah. Great, thank you. Nancy, are you interested? <laughs> Nancy has experience too. I can, I can do it too. Now, are we, uh, are they gonna be doing any of the remote stations for water hydration or? Um, I don't think so. It's going through the town center. So it's a different route. Oh, okay. oh I see. That's a, that was my question. So that's, another, that's interesting. And what, what else is happening in that week? 
Um, I would check to see what a uh, press release. I haven't heard. We, okay. I don't know if they've announced it yet, but. It's being, uh, uh, it's a recreation, recreation department plus. Um, can you just uh, mute your, your, uh, your audio, Jim? Thanks. Um, it's the October, October, I mean, it's the uh, SPAT and Wellfleet Recreation Department together. And it's called Wellfleet Ocean Week, or uh, Wellfleet Oyster Week. It's going to be, oh, that's right. it's it's gonna be was... when um, Oyster Fest would have been. So it's just going to be various things. We did a Wellfleet Ocean Week years ago. And uh, so I forgot that put, should have put in Oyster rather than Ocean. So this is an Oyster Week or an Ocean Week? It's an I Oyster it's Week. The... I think it's an oyster week, but um, it's not the oyster fest weekend. No, it's October no. 3rd. Yeah. Right. Okay. But, but, it, it's, but it's sort of in place of okay. the oyster week, <laughs> the oyster fest. Yeah. 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 Let me just also, do a quick, yeah. uh, I'll just do a quick look up and verify that while we keep talking. Yeah. Sometimes people have called it an October fest too. Okay. So um, October 11th is Coast Sweep. Um, we applied to do that ourselves. Uh, it's a beach cleanup on October 11th at Duck Harbor and the Gut, and that's at 9 a.m. And there's a sign up uh, link that I can send around and please share it widely when you get it. Um, we'll probably, I don't know if we'll do a press release, but we'll definitely put it out on by email, etc. So if you're interested in participating, it's um, a great beach cleanup. They have this from the Ocean Conservancy provides these tally sheets that you can, um, and there's an app called, I think, Clean Swell, something like that. Have to look it up. But uh, you can keep track of what you're finding. Nine o'clock, right? Did I hear right? Nine o'clock, yeah, October 11th. And October 11th is a Monday. That's a holiday Monday. So please, please join in. So we can send, uh, and will that be posted on the Coast Sweep? It is already, yeah. Oh, great. You can sign up there if you okay. want, okay. Coast Sweep. Just if you Google Coast Sweep Massachusetts, it's uh, run by the state. There's also a beach cleanup um, on September 18th, which is run by a different organization and that's a commercial company um, that you can look into that as well. I think that's, they're trying to do that Cape Wide and- um, or is, that, is that the, was it Willie's? Yeah, yeah. Or we something? decided to go with uh, the state coast sweep since we've been doing it for, with them for five plus years, I think. And it's also a nonprofit rather than a commercial entity. So there's that, um, recycling news, textiles, bookmarker flyers. So um, I started asking around about textile recycling. And I know what happens at the transfer station. There's a, a trailer run by Bay State Textiles where you can drop off single shoes, you know, sh uh, linens, clothing things in any condition, as long as they're clean and dry. And, uh, but I wondered about the local sh um, like animal shelters. And so I called up uh, Wild Care, which is a, a veterinary place for wild animals. And they had very specific needs. And uh, so they provided a list of what they like, things like pillowcases and towels mostly. But they, there has to be um, drop off you have to arrange to drop it off. So they don't want anyone to just leave it there on their doorstep. They're, um, they made a real point of that. So there's that place I called the Audubon and they have a turtle program that Christine mentioned a while back, but they don't need towels at this point. Maybe they will later in the year. Um, and then the animal shelter in Brewster, from what I understand from wild care, they're, um, not, a, not as active right now in seeking out linens for their shelter. So uh, I thought what we could do is a flyer some, and a poster that could go up by email and be printed as well. So we're looking into getting some illustrations. Yes, Jaya? 
I have another question. Are they still located in that, that lovely um, yellow building at the Rotary? Yes. A time ago, I left some animals. Yeah, okay, yeah. thank you. Sure, yes, Olivia, okay. you're muted. So uh, Brewster Animal Shelter had recently posted on Facebook that they were in desperate need of bedding and they did a, and they did a big drive and then they posted an update saying that they still do want more towels oh. and bedding. Oh, okay, great. So I took a big amount there two weeks ago, but they said they still want. So that was on their on Facebook. Yeah, I didn't actually choose with someone from there, but yeah, uh, I've always brought stuff there, and they always. He said they're starting to bring puppies from the south again. They had stopped; oh. they're starting again. Oh, okay, all right. So that's another thing we can put on the flyer. It's something that doesn't appear in the Recycle Smart website or other places. Um, probably doesn't appear on the town website either. So it's a good way for us to get information out there. I'm curious. What are they doing with it? The bedding for the animals? Yeah. Well, they, they put it as bedding or um, you know, to clean them up, to dry them off, things like that. Okay. Sometimes okay. they're wounded or they've had a tiny operation and the bedding needs more changing. I see. Okay. Right. But basically, yeah. they're, they're, they're dirty. So they need a lot of bedding. Yeah. <laughs> they put I down something soft something for them to sleep on. Right. Yeah, well, what they do with it. After maybe they just keep reusing it. Yeah. They might wash it. We don't know. They mm -hmm. might dispose of it. Um, I I don't know if we want to point out like Bay State Textiles is for profit, but they're excellent with those textiles that um, you know a thrift shop and a consignment shop or Goodwill that nobody is going to wear, and I think or or that the swap shop. And so like sometimes in the swap shop we'll clean out that linen area because there'll be some stuff that's been sitting there for four weeks that nobody wants. Um, but it'll be like, you know, even burlap -y type of stuff and um, pillows mm -hmm. and things like that, that, you know, you wouldn't want to take used pillows into your, your home typically. Um, mm -hmm. So they recycle it. So it's really great in that, but it is a for-profit. So sometimes people look at that and they sort of feel averse, but the good thing is it's recycling it instead of yeah. putting it in yeah. the waste. Yeah. And it probably costs them something for the process of what they're doing. Mm -hmm. would, you know? Yeah. I mean, well, all of recycling is for profit in some way. Right, yeah. right. So. Yeah. But, for, you know, versus the, the Goodwill Industries yeah. or Salvation Army, yeah. when you have a nice suit and you're donating it, you want to pick and choose and decide mm -hmm. if AIM will take it or, or, or um, okay. one yeah, of the other. Right. Yeah, and if we do a flyer, we probably should clarify all the things that Bay State does take because it's a huge variety. I mean, they take right. leather goods and shoes, even if they're old mismatched yeah, shoes. Yeah, right, it's exactly. Yeah. Also, Mass Appeal, of course, takes some um, clothing mm -hmm. and some bedding, and that's um, they offer that for free. And Ames Thrift Shop too. But like like Nancy was saying, there's things that you that you wouldn't take there. Um, that might be just not saleable, you know? And so that's why the Bay State Textiles uh, provides a good service. And that trailer fills up pretty quickly too. There's, I yes. think there's a lot of material that goes there. And I'm pretty sure they pay the town a little something because I know at um, schools and things would often have um, textile drives and they would, Bay State would bring their vehicle there and collect material. Mm -hmm. And then offer the school a bit. I'm not sure how much, but some money. So good. Um, we'll make some progress on that flyer. Hopefully, have it for you next month. Uh, plastic reduction, aquaculture, and the Mass DP grant. So, Tom Sigio couldn't make it today. He um, he's on the Shellfish Advisory Board and has also joined um, the board of SPAT. And SPAT has applied for the MassDEP micro grant. This is um, to reduce plastics in aquaculture or reduce aquaculture plastics. Uh, they decided to rename it. It's a good uh, three letter acronym, reduce aquaculture plastics. And uh, so we'll hear about whether they'll um, get that money to provide alternatives to zip tie, because right now the oyster bags are secured onto the racks by using plastic zip ties. A lot of them end up 
lost in the water. And so uh, Tom and some other shellfish people have uh, uh, noticed that some are using bungee balls. And so they're going to be securing the, the bags onto the framework with these bungee balls. They're reusable. They're um, also maybe metal clips. So they're going to be, it's a pilot program where they'll try, they'll try both of those things. And so we'll hope to hear, I think in a, in a month or so, back from the Mass DEP on that. We, um, our SPAT also uh, partnered with the Center for Coastal Studies, Laura Ludwig, who runs their marine debris program there. So she's also listed as a supporter on the grant. Uh, NIPS Universal Redemption Law. I haven't done anything on that. I don't know if Christine. I haven't done anything either. And, and um, I did say that I would do some research in the fall. Um, and maybe next month, this month is, has been um, still pretty busy for me. But sure. if anybody else is interested in looking what other towns in Massachusetts have done and gathering information, <laughs> feel free. <laughs> Otherwise, I'll get to it later. Okay, sounds good. Um, packaging, reusable container survey. So one other part of that Mass DP micro grant was, seemed really intriguing. They, um, they had a paragraph of suggestions uh, if people were needed ideas on things to apply for. And one of them was encouraging a local kitchen to, or restaurant to provide washable takeout containers and to pilot, do a pilot project there. So in thinking about it, um, we know that the, at the adult community center, the senior center, COA, they offer Marianne's Cafe. It's a, a program where you can get takeout meals. And for a long time, they had lunches on site on Thursdays, I think. It's a very popular program, but now because of the pandemic, they're offering um, soups to go, and in the summer it was salads to go. And we thought since they're um, a repeat customer, there's people that are using the program year after year, that they might be a good candidate for this reusable tableware, um, takeout containers. So the survey is uh, just drafted it, and let's see if I can share the screen. Uh, yeah, here it is. Let me know if you see it. Yep. Yeah. It might be kind of big, but um, so would you consider trying a free reusable washable personalized takeout container as opposed to a plastic disposable container? And so this would be circle your preferences, tell us more. And then this is um, part two or page two of the survey. And this is a first draft. So uh, really, if you have some comments or concerns, questions, ideas, anything, please send them over. Um, so I just, I, yeah, I yeah. just have a, a comment. I, I had some takeout from uh, PJs over the summer and I can't, I don't know what it was that they were, uh, the, the material on the container, but it tore up very easily and I put it in my compost. I don't know if I did the right thing or not, but I, I don't know what they're using. Does anybody else? It might um, have been, is it a clamshell box? Like a box that opens like well, this? Well, I got, I, got, I got fish tacos and the tacos were, you know, the fish was quite contained in the tacos. So the container was quite clean mm -hmm. and it tore up like it was some kind of cardboard, but it was, yeah, I just put it all in the compost. Yeah, it's probably yeah. paper. Any, any of those kinds of um, uh, cardboard or stiff paper containers have some kind of uh, a moisture barrier on them. Uh, yes. Sometimes it's PFAS, sometimes it's uh, some kind of a wax. Um, I mean- These didn't seem it. to be waxy though. The, the, uh, the PFAS anyway, maybe, can't maybe, see maybe, at all because it's in the paper, should, but anyway. I think it might be worth asking PJs what, they do, what, what it is, where, where they did it from. And what, yeah. What did it yeah. From, yeah. Well, for this, for this <laughs> grant, it's more of a asking people to use washable things, so not disposable or compostable. So is the goal here that the customer wanting a takeout takes their own thing with them then? 
Yep, you would have you could have your name on it. You could have a personalized one and just kind of ref and the the kitchen would refill it. Yeah, you just still talking about the COA. What's that? Are we still talking about the CO COA? Yeah. Yeah. Marion's Cafe. This is just a preliminary um, question questionnaire mm -hmm. to see yeah. if the people that use the program would be interested, or if you know the, one of the drawbacks to. Uh, stainless steel, for instance, is you if you get a stain, stainless soup in a stainless steel cup or container, you can't pop it in the microwave because you can't put metal in right, it. Right, right, right. So good. you need to empty it out into a saucepan and heat it up that way. But it so, should stay warm. Usually with those, they're insulated. Right, like one could. Yeah, maybe, when you grab it, it's hot. Yeah, I was wondering if they are thinking of doing a slight incentive because it costs them a little bit less to not uh, store and buy the containers that they would offer a little discount incentive. For some people, any discount is an incentive. So I oh, I see. Like, um, well, the program, we would, or they would apply for the grant that say the friends of the COA or, or whomever. This yeah, is just using okay. them as an example. So a nonprofit would apply for the grant and then um, the, the equipment or the materials would be, you use the $5,000 in the grant to, to buy that stuff. And uh, I'm not sure if the, um, I, I guess the Marion's Cafe charges, uh, I think it's a pretty modest amount for the soup and the salads. Mm. Yeah, they, so, might, they might consider reducing it for, um, I don't know, that's a, that's a good they point. They probably need a deposit on the thing. You don't that's know. a good point, no, yeah. You take it back yourself and wash. You take it back. I gather you show up with your container. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not it's like it. Take it away, yeah, it's yours, yeah. Hold on, this for most people, it'd be more convenient, like if everyone used a glass jar and then every week you brought back a glass jar and took a new thing, you know, like the switch. Mm -hmm. I thought that's what the grant was for, Lydia, is to purchase some um, containers that people would yeah. then get, bring back, they get washed and used again. Yeah, yeah I would think Just the health the department would require that they have washed them in a, like a sanitary commercial. Yeah washer so to them um, you know so that you would just be returning it and hopefully clean but they'd still put it in a sterilizer but well that's what i mean if you show up with your own that eliminates one more thing they have to do well i think they probably Sorry. might like fill them all and then i don't know I, I think it, the first thing we probably should do, and maybe you have Lydia, is talk to uh, the person that runs Mary Ann's Kitchen and the COA, yeah. because they may be able to really answer the questions about, yeah, people, mm -hmm. use, they need to be able to reheat them, so it needs to be glass versus stainless steel or whatever, whereas yeah. maybe salads could be in stainless steel. Um, mm -hmm. And then if we do do the survey, I think we should probably make it pretty simple so that people won't, um, say, oh, this is too much trouble to fill out. And, um, and so just- two, uh, two questions. <laughs> oh, then I'll, yeah, the second page has right. more, more yeah. stuff about how do you heat it. And I think probably the, you know, maybe Marianne's Cafe could answer those questions about yeah. how it's normally. Yeah. Um, it could be that people are feeling like, well, I get this, you know, plastic tub and they're just stacking up in my house. And I, you know, mm -hmm. maybe I'm recycling some of them, maybe I'm not. Yeah. It could be that there's just so many. It's like the plastic is used for, as we know, like basically 12 minutes and then it's disposed of, most disposable plastic. So um, this, I think it's what the DEP is encouraging is this kind of a, mm -hmm. a pilot. And uh, there are some restaurants in the Boston area that are doing this. And there's some companies across the country that, that offer the program. It's um, I think it takes some. It'll take some getting used to, and we'll we'll see what they say. I, I did send it on to Terry Fraser, who's the assistant director at the senior center, adult community center. Sorry, and um, so she'll share it with the friends of the uh, with Marianne's Cafe and the friends of the COA. 
they also used that kitchen for Meals on Wheels, I think. Um, and that would be a great, I don't know if they still use it, but they always use the black plastic um, tray things that you can't recycle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, there's a, a neighbor on my street, well, wait, in the neighborhood who, who put, always hung them out for trees and his property is covered. It's a derelict house now covered with these plastic black plastic things from Meals on Wheels. What? Why did she hang them out? Just scare off the bridge or what? He was a weird guy. <laughs> but oh, anyway. Okay. <laughs> so Deep um, well fleet weird. <laughs> yeah. <right. laughs> anyway, so that that that's a, a separate issue, but that would be an, a great pilot as well is to try to get them to use. And but that's a reheat question. Yeah. Well, well if you have one of those, what do they call those aluminum like an aluminum pie pan, pie pan or mm -hmm. there's got to be a name for them. And it just comes with a cardboard top. That's what the people, a lot of people are using those. Um, there's a couple of restaurants in Provincetown that are using those instead of the plastic. So um, those are a possibility. But you heat the, those again would go in the oven, not the microwave. Right. So. And they're hot when you put hot food in them. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like a, a f aluminum foil pan, mm -hmm. circular pan or rectangular little pan. They, I've noticed those at, at Friends Marketplace and other places using those mm -hmm. for takeout or meals ready to go. Or, anyway, so that's kind of to be continued. And uh, that's a good initiative. Thank you, Lydia, for yeah, changing sure. that. Yeah. They have um, other really neat um, ideas on the Mass DEP site. There was one about. Um, construction and demolition uh, and buildings that are slated for demolition to try and salvage the wood. I know that happens to a certain extent, but this would be a program that would make it uh, happen a bit more. So that's another thing they're interested in promoting. Um, yeah, it broke my heart during our recent construction to, to see the dumpster with all that stuff in it. I was like, can't you send that to somewhere? And he said, oh, no, you can't send this. You can't send that, blah, blah, blah. But there, uh, there must be ways to, yeah. if, if contractors are willing, yeah. find uh, reuse opportunities. Right. But anyway. Because building materials also aren't the kind of far and few between now. They're hard to get. Very hard to get. I have heard. Very but... expensive now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but if you're, you know, demoing, old rooms <laughs> or houses or parts of houses, then it takes a lot of work to sort through and see what's usable, what's not, find an outlet for it, etc. And um, that's extra yeah. effort. Well, right Probably here in town, there's a, a store that a gallery or a maker who uses uh, wood, mm. solid wood for furniture, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. People doing it. Yeah. Um, so compost outreach. Well, we kind of talked about the pointer sign that that Mike has at the transfer station now. So he said he'd be doing some more to promote composting, and uh, so that's always good. Um, updates: commercial water bottle ban, outreach plan, decal maps and apps, and Christine. Is Chris yeah. Here? Let Let me just. Um share if I can the, um, I don't see it at the moment. Let me just bring it up. Yeah, I lost it. Anyway, I just wanted to share the map. Oh, there it is. Let me try sharing again. Yeah, no, it's not on, it's not coming up as an option. You so want never me to mind. Try? But anyway, the, um, I think you all have the link to the map. Um, I did find an icon that was a little faucet with a drip coming out instead of using the numbers for the um, okay. locations under each town were just numbered. And now they have a little faucet with the drop of water coming That's out. That's so cool, Christine. Yeah. I see it. Yeah. I'm going to share the yeah. screen. You, sorry about there you that. Go. It's on again. I pressed the wrong button. Um, anyway. The there's the map. Yeah, there's a map. So in order to get, in order to get rid of the, uh, you know, the having to click all items 
it, I just have to take the time to go in and change the icon for everything individually rather than, so we don't have that additional list that you have to open for each town. But anyway, so we have three towns now and um, Brewster says they are, um, they would like to also add theirs. And um, so I guess the next question is, we'll see how this goes and how we spread it. So right now we just have a link to it in the poster that we did. Uh, so the right now the map is, um, is set to be shareable with anybody who has the link. We could also make it public so that anybody that Googles or searches for um, a refill Cape Cod map would find it. Um, and it is um, created through our recycling, our Wellfleet Recycles Google account. And um, we put the Wellfleet Recycles Gmail address on there for updates. You have to expand the uh, description to be able to see that. But anyway, so I don't know where we want to go from, from here with that. Uh, I was going to send um, an email to uh, the organizations that we put on the flyer, Sustainable Practices and um, Care for the Cape and Islands, to see if they want to um, put a link on their websites. And also um, Meg in um, the recycling uh, chair and Brewster has been in touch with the uh, with the uh, cooperative extension for Barnstable County, and they were in interested too in you know hosting something or having information there. So that's another thing. So uh, I guess we should put it on our website, perhaps. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe see if we can add it to uh, the town website for recycling committee also. Um, and the, maybe the water commissioners would be interested in the rec department. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. um, that's a good idea. There's also the, on the county level, there's the uh, Love Your Water program. Right. That's a good point, maybe. I don't know if that's part of Cooperative Extension or if it's another project, but. And I, I guess there's no reason not to make it public and shareable. Does anybody have any, uh, any comments on that? I think it's a good idea, yeah. Okay. It makes a lot of sense. Okay, I'll do that. Is this something we can share on Instagram? Yeah, and I think, um, I don't know if Chris is still, I think she's traveling, but I can... hi there, Chris. <laughs> Muted right now. But... Oops. Um, so uh, maybe we can uh, put that in an Instagram, um, on our Instagram and there's no reason not to share it from private Instagrams too, I would think. We could put something on Wellfleet. Well, I mean, people who live in Wellfleet aren't, aren't really the target, but uh, it could So they would it. search uh, Refill Cape Cod and, and it would come up if it were made Yeah, of or water locations or, you know, mm -hmm. we can play around with it and see see what, what kind of <laughs> search you put in to, to get it to come up. Yeah, there was one group that used a water drop, a QR code in the shape of a water drop, which I thought that was a good yeah. symbol. And I'd recommend that for this program. Yes, um, I just looked through what was available already. I mean, you can mm -hmm. always create your own icon to use. We wouldn't want to use a trademarked one water drop, but we can probably figure out some kind of generic water drop that so if anyone has any ideas or finds any little icons we can use instead of the water tap, feel free to send them. Oh, no, no, I think the water tap's great for the map, but I mean, oh. just on a, a poster, use, create a QR code in the shape of a water drop to people to scan. Oh, to get to this map, yeah. Typing in so I don't know how that, um, I don't know how that works and how you do that and who pays for it, if anybody or. I think it's free. I think Google has ways to do it. Hmm. Um, okay, something to consider. And Chris, um, oh, is there anything, any questions or any other thoughts on the um, on that part? Yeah. Um, so um, when Chris Chris has time, maybe she can look at um, 
uh, what of the flyer could be posted or map links. So I guess the flyer link, uh, the flyer we should put up on our, our website page. So, which begs the question, is there anyone that might be interested in um, being the website person that sort of posts and organizes things? Um, Lydia has always done that. And um, I think it would be nice to have a dedicated person to do it. Um, happy to do it if someone trains me how to do it. I don't know. Okay. Oh, that would be wonderful, Olivia. Yeah, it's through um, WIPs. It's very easy. I can show you based the, the, and, uh, kind of the basics of it. I don't, I'm not an expert at any means. Yeah, so. that would be great, Olivia. And um, I have a, we have, there's sort of a list of things we've been wanting to to um, update and add and, and that would be wonderful. Thank you. I still have to follow up on our town page. We have been trying to add a, a good Instagram link to our town web uh, website, but it keeps getting done incorrectly. So I'll, I'll persist in that. And we also have to add Olivia to our member list. Mm -hmm. So I will follow up uh, with the town on that. Sounds good. Um, water bottle refill stations. So I emailed, uh, there, <laughs> it's kind of, it's a little frustrating with the marina trying to get them to install the, the one that they've had for uh, almost, well, 2019, two years. And um, they, you know, I started in May. Yeah, we'll try to get in by Memorial Day. Yeah, we'll get it in the summer. Yeah, we'll try to get it in by Labor Day, but it's still not up. So, um, I'm maybe sure. we should set the province down independent on it, send a reporter down there. <laughs> Where's that they're water good, station? <laughs> they're, they're good at digging into the sort of weirder aspects of non compliance in Wealth Week. Yeah. It's not really a compliance issue. It's sort of like we we um, raised the money, NASA yeah. Disposal sponsored it. And we're still waiting for their to let them know. Yes, it's in. Here's the plaque. <laughs> um, anyway, so that's where that stands. If you go yeah. by there, they're supposed to put it on the outside of the of the women's restroom. Ideally, it would have been on the side of the town uh, ramp, but they said that better water supply was available outside the women's restroom where the shower pumping. Yes. Right, right. Anyway, so uh, if anybody goes by there, put a bug in there. Okay, hey, where's, that, where's that water station? <laughs> and then regarding the town hall, I emailed Jay and he's um, uh, our DPW director and he, or interim, I guess at this point, uh, and he's on vacation for another week or two, um, but I will follow up with him on that when he gets back. Sounds good. Fingers crossed that we'll get it in before the winter. Well, now I know I'm pretty sure they're going to say, oh, well, it's after the season. You know, let's wait till next spring. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. OK. Uh, next is social media post and Chris W. Chris, do you want to unmute? She may not be able to right now since she's driving, but we can um, we'll go back to it or yeah. Yeah, send her an email with any suggestions we have. I guess the suggestions were the flyer. Um, the, the dump being um, closed Wednesday, oh, right, Thursday. Dump. That's a, a big one, I think. Yeah. Although people will know as soon as they drive their car over. And right. <laughs> They'll remember. <laughs> And um, the map, I guess, if it, there's a link on the flyer or in some other way. Did we talk about anything else? Oh, textiles, we could do something. Oh, maybe that'll be yeah. for next time. Yeah. Think, yeah. Works. The map is ready. I mean, the, the water refill is, that one's ready. That's out there. So maybe Wednesday, Thursday, and the refill info. OK. Sounds good. Mm, community Cutlery Library of Things. Uh, yeah, so we we uh, were contacted. I forgot to share this last meeting. Uh, somebody with a wedding on September 12th contacted us about bar, um, getting plates and cutlery and napkins and 
other things. And um, so I'm arranged with the library to meet her there um, a couple of weeks ago and she picked out, she was absolutely thrilled with, we had a donation of lots of um, China plates and she was having, I think, 40 people. So she took all the China plates mixed and she absolutely <laughs> was thrilled with them. <laughs> um, and she apparently grew up in Wellfleet and now lives, um, I think it's Yarmouth, somewhere around there. Anyway, so that's happening. Nice. Yeah. Um, and then there's, uh, you know, cataloging uh, the next step in terms of towards this goal of being able to have the library take over the loaning, uh, you know, the, the community cutlery was gonna be sort of the pilot of a library of things. So we would need to get sort of pictures and descriptions and ways of um, bundling things into like a kit so that, you know, you can't really <coughs> pick out you know, two or three things, you know, they come in 10 or 20 or whatever. And Lydia and I started on that and we have an inventory, uh, but we need to take uh, pictures of stuff. So that is TBD. And some other stuff for the library of things would be um, those grabbers, you know, the things we can pick up trash with. Mm -hmm. And then um, we would like to have those for the next beach clean on October 3rd, right. if possible. So yes. um, I think we were going to find out pricing on that. Um, so we could purchase. Yeah, so they're not, they're not very expensive. I do, have not had a chance to look at it, but I would say that maybe we should ask the committee for approval to purchase, I don't know, eight grabbers or something. Okay, is that a motion? Yeah, I make a motion to, um, to purchase eight grabbers for beach cleanups. Is there a second? A second? If they could be used, sure. Yeah. All right. Um, any other comments or notes? I just have one um, comment. I, I had one for a while from um, cleaning up the ponds, and um, it was not very sturdy, but that was some years ago. Mm -hmm. So maybe they've improved. Yeah. Okay. I've noticed so they have some that fold, and they're, they're also very inexpensive. So I don't know if that's yeah. a good thing, but yeah. Do you have any recommendations? Oh, sorry, Jaya. No, I was just saying is sometimes there's a reason why some things are really in yeah. So <laughs> just the thought. Yeah. Jane, you've talked about your um, household full of grabbers. Any recommendations on uh, brands? Or uh, I'm, a, I'm afraid I just got mine from Amazon. And I, I would okay. just go back. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. But I do, I, I mean, the first, uh, coastal sweep cleanup thing I went on, you know, I was given a, a long pole with just a single nail on the end of it. Mm -hmm. And I found that very difficult. The grabber is so much simpler for picking Absolutely. things up. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Alrighty. Okay. So, so, did, we, so did, we all, did we vote to approve the purchase? All in favor? Yeah. Yes. Looks like we have Christine. Oh, let's do a roll call. Christine? Yes. Yes. Lydia, uh, I. Speak. <laughs> yes. Uh, can you hear? Can you hear me now? Yes, I yeah. can hear you. Yay. Okay, I, I'm doing this on my phone, and I've never done a Zoom call on my phone before. I finally got the voice to work. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard everything you said. No, <laughs> okay. Right. So I just want to make sure we have that vote. So yes, James, we do. Yes. yes. Okay. Olivia, oh, we didn't hear you. Um, Nancy. Yes. Jaya? Yes. Okay, Olivia's muted now. Sorry, yes. Okay, thank you. So we've got that. Um, and committee vacancies, we're full up now, except we have space for two alternates if there's people out there who'd like to join. There's, um, the town has the application on their website to join town boards and committees and they get approved. Um, you're appointed by the select board. That's how it works for this for this committee. Um, now we'll go to Nancy's minutes. Thank you, Nancy, for for the PDFs uh, for the minute recent minutes for the past couple of months. And thank you for getting those out ahead of time too. So has everyone had a chance to read them? And is there a motion? To, any corrections or? Um, I haven't had a chance to read, but um, I printed them out, and I'll just note. 
you know, any corrections and send them to Nancy after the meeting, if that's okay. Yeah, but we I'll, could I'll go wait. ahead and we we could go ahead and approve them with you know minor well, edit. Yeah, I think there's two months worth. So, and we did send them out by email. They went around to everybody. Um, <laughs> Well, I propose we accept them. I read them a couple of days ago, so you know I might have forgotten, okay. but I didn't. Yeah. There's no, there's, I made no notations of any. Okay, Same here. Um, so, is there a second? I can second. I uh, read. Yeah. Thanks. And so, any other notes or comments? All in favor of those? The minutes. Okay. So that's if you wouldn't mind, because we're supposed to do it by voice. If you yes. wouldn't mind saying your name. Yes. 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 yes, Chris. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, yeah. We have the whole committee here. Isn't that <laughs> wonderful? Yeah. All seven it's of been a long time since we've had a full compliment. Yes. That's great. And and since I wasn't uh, uh, able to be heard when uh, the social media posts come up, could I do a quick update on that? Yes, please. Okay. So um, so this month I did. Um, several um, posts and two of them got a lot of attention. I did one on the plastic water bottle ban and um, I did it on Instagram, the Wellfleet um, community page. And then I posted something myself, not as part of the committee on the Provincetown community page. And there was so much response and so much good dialogue back and forth with those. It was really, oh, it was a really satisfying thing, especially Provincetown, the Provincetown community page there were, I mean, there were some people who had objections and I was able to answer them and then other people joined in. I, I think there were like over 200 people that liked it and so many people that commented on it. It was really a really good thing. Um, so that was very satisfying. And then um, I had taken a picture of a meal that I had at PJ's that I was so pleased with how it was um, packaged and had asked um, Lydia and Christine who went to the town to ask if I could post specifically that it was PJ's who was doing this and kind of you know call them out for doing a good job and they said that we can't do it as a town committee so I just posted the picture and I just said you know there's a lot of restaurants that are doing a good job and it's been noticed and appreciated and I thought it was really funny when it went on the Facebook the Wellfleet Facebook page the first two comments were people saying, wow, now I want a meal at PJ's. <laughs> so awesome. it was pretty obvious, but you know, <laughs> I didn't write anything, but it was just what the picture was. Um, but that also got a lot of good response. So it's, it, it, was, it was nice just to have a lot of back and forth with people that way. That's great, Chris. I, you yeah. know, I never go to Instagram otherwise or social media, so I don't know when you posted, but I, I'll, mm -hmm. I'll start. It's good. I'll start uh, making sure I check it, and um, yeah. that's great that you're getting it onto Facebook pages and other stuff too. Yeah, and it's just mm -hmm. the dialogue that's going back and forth. I feel is is mm -hmm. a really positive thing, so that's really nice. Um, I just I just found out that um, in the UK, Oxfam has designated September as second hand September and trying to encourage people mm -hmm. to buy second hand clothing rather than buy new clothing. So. Um, I think today I'm, I'll be putting a post up about that because um, I think that's such a great program, um, you know, initiative that they're doing. So, um, great. yeah, yeah. And you well, heard I about have, the... I have to go. Okay. See okay. You okay. Thanks for being here. All right. All right. All right. Bye. Um, Chris, I'll be just to make sure you have the, for Wednesday and Thursdays, the post at the dump. Post oh, I, I do. I, I didn't hear that. What was that? One? Okay. Yeah, there's new, uh, starting this week, the dump is closed Wednesday and Thursday. Okay. So I thought that would be a good Instagram thing. And sure. um, also the Cape Cod refill, drink Cape Cod top, pro, you know, the flyer. Mm -hmm. uh, put that out there since that's all set. Right. And um, the flyer itself isn't something that is would really work on Instagram right, just because it's just, such a it. yeah. um, and I kind of mentioned a little bit of that in the plastic water bottle ban okay. that, that that it's sort of coming so I think as soon as the map is up and, and you know accessible to the public then I can post something about that okay I think Chris okay. is yeah I'll go, 
Yeah, I'll go ahead and do that, Chris, and then let you know. Okay, okay. that sounds good. All right, Ready? sounds good. All right, um, accounting report. Uh, yes, I'm very pleased to say we've concluded all of our back and forth with the town accountant. Um, and uh, she was hoping to get us a report that we could put into our minutes for this month, but um, she didn't have a chance. But we have resolved all of the various issues. Um, the only one that wasn't resolved in our favor was the charges of about you know, $273 for uh, replacement community cutlery that they were supposed to uh, be paid for from insurance proceeds, but uh, that was not done correctly and our attempts to correct it over the last two years um, failed and now it's too late. So that's the only thing that we were stuck paying for. The interns thousand dollars that was incorrectly debited, that was debit, uh, credited back to our gift fund account. So we now have um, the, the fiscal year 22 budget is 1500, uh, no, I think she said 1500. I thought it was 1200. Maybe I wrote that down incorrectly or she wrote it incorrectly. But in any case, <laughs> it was the 775 that we is our yearly budget and then $500 that is a line item in the DPW budget. And we just have to make sure that for this year, we sort of combine those so there's no more confusion and maybe increase it. And we've done um, a lot of preparation for previous years and we're always too late in getting it to the right person at the right mm. time. So maybe that's a calendar item. When should that yeah. be done, what month? That would be a very good calendar item to get to them early, I'm sure by the end of the year. Also, and there's a meeting. special town meeting this time. Is that something that's approved by town meeting? Uh, that's a good question. I don't know if they're gonna be um, looking at budget or not, budget items. Okay. They may have some, fiscal year 22 budget items unresolved. That, mm -hmm. okay. It's a good question. But in any case, so we have, um, she said 1,500. So it's either 1,200 or 1,500. <laughs> and then we have 2,259, well, $60, $2,260 in one of our gift funds. And that includes um, the $2,000 sponsorship for the town hall refill station. We have um, $1,963 in our other gift fund account. Um, some of that was donated for a library refill station, $500 of it, and others are for other expenses. Could so we, that's where we stand. Could so we the have that, um, sorry, could we have that on a, on a spreadsheet, those particular things or in an email? Yeah, I'll send an email. Um, I was hoping to have the report. Actually, I'll email her again and see if she can get the reports to us for the last two years, so. And our only expenses in fiscal year 21. Um, so the, the, was, was the, I'm sorry, I'll, I'll just put all this in, a, in an email and send it out so that everybody can see it. That's and hopefully good. we'll actually That's have good. a report to attach. And if I get one, Nancy, I'll send it to you so that you can include it with the minutes. So that's- Is uh, it that's um, 2,200? It was- Sorry, uh, thanks, Christine. I know you've worked really hard on this. Uh, yeah, this, is, this, this was one of the really long time ones and, and the, uh, the marinas, <laughs> refill stations, yeah. the other one. I'd love to get those off my plate. Um, just a, a quick question about the 2,260. 2,000 of that is NOSET and then 260 is miscellaneous. Uh, yes, I, actually it could be the other way around that 1,963 is the remains of the, of uh, because it cost a little bit more to get the other one. And it's gonna cost a little bit more for this one because they've gone up in price quite a bit in two years. Oh. So um, we'll, ha we'll have to figure out how to Will you use other money in the gift fund account or maybe some from our budget? Okay, so we don't really have, um, I mean, we have a sense of what we, the balance is, but it's- could Yeah, be I mean, the balance is if, with the $1,500 budget is $5,722.54, our total okay, great. funds. Thank you so much, oh my gosh. Sure. Um, um, 
anyway, so hopefully we'll get a report. Mm -hmm. And now we're at correspondence, future agenda items. Um, I haven't been to the mailbox. I did drop off some of those note cards for you, Nancy. I don't know if you ever picked them up, but they're, they're there. <laughs> I went to the mail room, okay. um, but I couldn't find what, where is our stuff? It's in the little, there's a file cabinet underneath the counter. Okay, okay. I thought it might cabinet. be, but I, I didn't want to open it without checking with somebody and <laughs> all the offices were, were busy. So I will, I will go this week to the file cabinet and get that. But um, otherwise there was nothing floating around for us okay. in that office. Uh, then we have, thank you for doing that. Um, any future agenda items, I would say just email them to Christine because she's going to be chairing the next meeting. And uh, that goes for the public too, if the public wants uh, any items on the agenda. You can email them to us at wellfleetrecycles at gmail.com. And I think we, our next meeting is October 5th. Is that right? Yep, Tuesday, October 5th. Thank you, Gary from East Ham for joining us. Is there... Any Thank you for inviting me as always. I always learn something. Thank you okay. very, very much. Sure, it's good to have you. I just want to add that um, Gary's um, going to use the flyer also for East Ham. Um, their ban goes into effect on September 21st. Um, just a note on that, Meg from Brewster noticed a typo. Um, the access, access thing didn't get uh, locked in. So we have to okay. send that out again to the... Um, your group, the refill Cape Cod group. Okay. Oh, Bolivia. Are we Zoom for this foreseeable future? Is it safe to assume October 5th is Zoom or is it unclear? Well, I mean, we could meet outside, I think. Um, it's weather permitting. And we also, it's um, one wrinkle is that you have to have it recorded. It has to be I mean, video recorded. I just didn't know. Yeah. Well, it, it would be really nice to do it. Uh, what we did in the past for the recording was have it in the library and um, the uh, media person would record it. We don't have a media person anyway, since um, she moved to another town full time. And I don't know if they've replaced that person or what the plan is, but that'd Nothing be a good thing to find out. So the library still hasn't opened uh, the library for meetings. Uh, so um, I think the, uh, I think Leon said the conservation commission was gonna start. Um, they meet in the town hall basement room, but I'm not positive about that. Personally, I'd rather meet by Zoom than, than in, a, in the basement. No. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> yeah. I'll assume Zoom if, unless I hear yeah. otherwise. Yeah, yeah. Okay, Thank you. so motion to adjourn. It's 1211 and Olivia makes the motion. Is there a second? I'll second. Christine, all in favor, Lydia, aye. Aye. Nancy, aye. 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 Okay. It's Great. Chris? And yes. Okay, thanks. So I think we're adjourned. And thanks, Carol and Gary. And welcome again, Olivia. Thanks so much. And, yeah, and Olivia, we'll be in touch about uh, the website. Okay. Great. I'm excited. Wonderful. Yeah. Thanks, everyone. Take care. Bye. 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 Bye.